The authors propose a novel approach to estimate and control the flexibility of deferrable loads in a distribution system operator's DSO grid without relying on historical observations. They utilize a non-parametric global forecasting model to simulate the flexible devices and learn their response to random control signals. This model is then incorporated into an optimization problem to define the control policy. Flexibility in distribution or transmission grids can increase grid resilience, reduce maintenance costs, and smooth the demand profile. The authors highlight the limitations of current control methods, such as ripple control, which can produce a rebound effect on the total load when devices are turned back on. They also discuss the importance of preserving thermal comfort in houses equipped with heat pumps by estimating their energy signature. The paper aims to provide a general and practical approach to characterize and control flexibility, including rebound effects, using a global forecasting model. The authors suggest that the forecaster's accuracy in terms of the objective function is sufficient to bypass simulations and directly use the forecaster as an emulator. Research and energy flexibility is divided into two primary areas, characterization and control. Characterization seeks to quantify the response of controllable appliances at various levels as a function of system properties, understanding demand-side management potential, and estimating maximum revenue streams from flexibility activation. Control focuses on quantifying flexibility to better exploit it through direct or indirect control, using simulated or real data. A recent systematic review highlights the lack of a commonly agreed-upon standard definition of energy flexibility. This work adopts a pragmatic approach, defining flexibility as the difference in forecast profiles of a group of flexible devices conditional to the deployed control signal. This research builds upon two concepts, simulation-based flexibility assessment and inverse optimization of price signals. Previous studies have assessed energy flexibility potential using bottom-up simulations, modeling flexibility as a function of external temperature, and using simulations to estimate flexibility. However, these studies assume full observability and controllability of the system. In contrast, this study focuses on unobservable systems with unknown controllers, a more realistic setting that can be readily applied with modern smart meters. The proposed approach uses a forecaster or energy oracle as a surrogate model of the system, allowing for a single simulation using a pseudorandom control signal and overcoming the issue of initial state synchronization. This methodology can be used for both simulated and observed systems, refining the training set with real observations from the controlled system. In the context of power systems, an energy oracle is a forecasting model that estimates the response to a given broadcasted control signal enabling what IF analysis and inverse optimization of price signals. This concept builds upon previous research on inverse optimization of price signals, which involves estimating approximate and invertible control laws by probing the system with a changing price signal. However, previous approaches have limitations, such as the inability to estimate the response to a binary control signal. To address this limitation, the authors propose a novel methodology using boosted trees to model the effect of a binary control signal on the power response. The Energy Oracle's training set can be created using only publicly available statistical information, eliminating the need for extensive modeling and simulation. The authors demonstrate the Energy Oracle's capabilities through an ablation study, evaluating various training methodologies and predicting energy flexibility using a global forecasting model. The Energy Oracle's optimization capabilities are showcased by simulating the available flexibility in the Swiss DSO Isienda Multiservite C Bellinzona AMB, grid, focusing on two flexible devices, heat pumps and electric water heaters. The study considers different heating system configurations, including heat pumps providing space heating and domestic hot water, and electric water heaters providing only domestic hot water. A detailed mathematical description of the building thermal model, stratified water tanks, heat pump, and heating system model is provided in the appendix. The Energy Oracle's key benefits include ensuring that thermal comfort constraints of end users with heat pumps are never violated, while optimizing available flexibility. This novel approach has the potential to significantly improve the efficiency of power systems and optimize energy distribution. In this section of the research paper, the authors delve into the retrieval and simulation of metadata for buildings in a specific region, 
with a particular emphasis on the presence of heat pumps, HPs, and electric heaters, EHs. To achieve this, they utilize statistical information from various sources to estimate the number of dwellings equipped with HPs or EHs, as well as other relevant parameters such as the equivalent thermal resistance and capacity of buildings. The paper provides a detailed description of their methodology, including figures and tables summarizing the key parameters and their sources. This includes the sizing of components for simulation based on available metadata, which is crucial for accurate analysis. The author's approach allows for a comprehensive understanding of the heating systems used in the region, shedding light on potential areas for improvement in terms of energy efficiency and sustainability. This section highlights the importance of precise data retrieval and simulation in understanding the heating systems of buildings. By focusing on HPs and EHs, the authors can identify trends and patterns in the usage of these systems, as well as potential opportunities for upgrading or replacing them with more efficient alternatives. The use of statistical information from various sources ensures that the estimates are reliable and representative of the region under study. The detailed methodology outlined in the paper serves as a valuable resource for researchers and stakeholders interested in optimizing building heating systems. It demonstrates the significance of considering factors such as thermal resistance and capacity when evaluating the performance of HPs and EHs, and underscores the need for accurate metadata retrieval and simulation in making informed decisions about energy management and sustainability initiatives. Thermal resistance and capacity are critical parameters in evaluating building energy efficiency. To better understand these factors, researchers employed a simple surrogate model to simulate one year of building operations. By leveraging gradient descent to optimize the thermal resistance value R, the model accurately matched annual energy consumption EY. Thermal capacity was estimated through uniform distribution sampling, with a mean value of 2.5 MJ per square meter, K and cutoff values of 1 and 5 MJ per square meter, K. These parameters play a vital role in determining energy efficiency and heating requirements, particularly in the context of energy saving policies and dynamic internal temperature setpoints throughout the day. The surrogate model's ability to accurately simulate building performance enables the assessment of various thermal resistance and capacity scenarios providing valuable insights for policymakers and building designers seeking to optimize energy efficiency. By exploring the interplay between thermal resistance, capacity, and energy consumption, this study contributes to the development of more sustainable and energy-efficient buildings. The authors discuss the sizing of energy harvesters, EH, and heat pumps, HP, for a building, using a formula that considers the number of occupants, estimated from the total building area and specific area per person and destination of use. The volume of the water tank is modeled similarly using a uniform distribution. For HP sizing, outdoor and indoor reference temperatures of 4 and 20 degrees Celsius are assumed, respectively. The final nominal power for the HP is chosen using a formula that considers the equivalent thermal resistance, temperature difference, and nominal power for domestic hot water. The thermal model of the building is validated by comparing simulated annual energy consumption with expected values. The results show that the simulated consumption is slightly higher than the expected one, due to thermal losses from the heating system and differences in heating system logic. The mean relative error on yearly energy consumption is about 5%, with 90% of simulated buildings having a discrepancy lower than 9%. The authors introduce the concept of an energy oracle for flexibility modeling and optimization, aiming to learn the aggregated power response of a group of HPs and EHs conditional on the number of devices and a control signal from simulations. This enables the characterization of flexibility potential beyond simulated conditions and the optimization of the control signal. A data set of features and targets is defined comprising NF features for a given simulated operational condition in a given group of devices, and targets including the aggregated power profile for the next H steps ahead. The paper presents the development of an energy oracle, a predictive model designed to forecast the power consumption of a group of flexible devices in response to control signals. This model aims to manage these devices efficiently for demand response purposes. To achieve this, the authors simulate two full years of data, one with daily force-off scenarios and another without any control. 
They then create penetration scenarios by grouping a subset of the simulated buildings and retrieving their aggregated power consumption. This process generates a dataset consisting of 40 equivalent years of data, which includes metadata such as the total number of each kind of device and the mean thermal equivalent transmittance, U, of the sampled buildings. Understanding the causal relationship between the control signal and the system response is crucial. However, due to the difficulty in building a dataset consisting of paired simulations with differences solely in one control signal, the authors rely on the Oracle model to learn the system response conditional to the value of the control. This approach follows suggestions from forecasting literature, where global models are effectively trained to predict time series coming from different sources. A dynamic programming approach is used to generate all possible daily force-off signals, considering criteria such as the maximum number of switches, maximum on steps, and nightly uncontrolled period. The resulting dataset is then used to train the Oracle model, which can predict the response of buildings in different portions of the distribution grid. The dataset augmentation process and energy Oracle model description are central to the current page. The energy Oracle model consists of multiple input single output, MISO, models, each a light GBM regressor, predicting energy usage at different steps ahead. This approach is necessary due to memory and computational constraints, as a single large model would be unfeasible. To enhance the dataset, penetration scenario features and temporal features are utilized. The training set is formed by removing the last 20% of yearly observations from each penetration scenario dataset to prevent overfitting. A hyperparameter optimization is performed using a three-fold cross-validation, focusing on the learning rate and number of estimators for the light GBM regressors. The optimization strategy involves a fixed budget approach with 40 samples. An example of the loss landscape for the hyperparameter optimization is provided in Figure 7. An ablation study on the model was conducted, testing different sampling strategies for dataset formation and model variations. This study aims to understand the impact of these variations on the model's performance and accuracy in predicting energy usage. In the realm of energy unbalance prediction, the utilization of random sampling and device grid sampling strategies for constructing the final training set is paramount. This approach facilitates an understanding of the system's response with and without future control signals, thereby enabling the calculation of an energy debt for each time step. This energy debt aids in predicting successive steps within the system. A comparative analysis of four configurations comprising two models and two sampling strategies reveals their performance in this context. A heat map illustrating the normalized mean absolute error, NMAE, as a function of the overall nominal power of the predicted samples and the step ahead is presented. The results demonstrate a significant correlation between oracle accuracy and aggregated loads, with the NMAE decreasing as the nominal power increases. This research underscores the importance of energy unbalance awareness in enhancing the predictive capabilities of these systems. By leveraging random and device grid sampling strategies, Researchers can better understand the system's response to future control signals, ultimately leading to more accurate predictions and enhanced efficiency in energy management. The authors evaluate the performance of two models, Light GBM Hybrid and Light GBM Energy Aware, in predicting power consumption using grid samples. The results, as shown in Figure 10, demonstrate that incorporating energy unbalance information into the models improves their accuracy, particularly in controlled scenarios. This is further supported by Figure 11, which compares the normalized mean absolute error, NMAE, of the four models as a function of step-ahead and time of prediction. To quantify the energy unbalance, the authors defined two relative energy unbalance measures, increment RELD and increment NOC TRL RELD, which capture the relative error in total energy need with respect to the simulation and the change in energy consumption estimated by the Oracle if the pool of flexible devices were not controlled. The results, presented in Figure 12, show that the empirical cumulative distribution functions, ECDFs, of increment RELD and its absolute value are closer to zero when the model considers information on energy unbalance. The grid sampling strategy is found to improve the precision of predictions in terms of used energy over the prediction horizon. Furthermore, the authors analyze the change in forecast energy consumption within the prediction horizon with and without control 
finding that the energy-aware models present a lower difference in consumed energy. Finally, figure 13 visualizes the rebound effect for different numbers of heat pumps, HPs, and energy hubs, EHs, using the energy unbalance aware model in combination with the grid sampling strategy. In the scenario where both penetrations are at their maximum value, the rebound effect is evident in terms of energy unbalance from the test set. The force off signals can have different lengths resulting in different observations exhibiting negative energy unbalance at various time steps. The upper left quadrant of the figure displays the energy unbalance predicted by the oracle in the case of the maximum number of electric heaters, EHs, and no heat pumps, HPs. Whereas the lower right quadrant demonstrates a much smaller tau, indicating a quicker decay of the rebound effect. This comparison highlights the distinct heating mechanisms and temporal constants inherent in systems heated by EHs and HPs. EHs, dedicated to domestic hot water, DHW, heating, have their activation guided by a hysteresis function, whereas HPs are responsible for both DHW and space heating, with their activation subject to the temperature of the hydronic circuit. The visual responses presented in figure 6 are color differentiated according to the 7-day mean of the ambient temperature, exhibiting the expected pattern whereas responses are independent of the average external temperature, and HP's responses show a modest influence. The section then proceeds to discuss the incorporation of the energy oracle into the optimization loop, focusing on optimizing a single flexibility group. The objective is to simultaneously minimize day head costs and peak tariff which is particularly well suited to Switzerland's energy market. The optimization problem is formulated as a minimization of the cost function, which includes the day ahead spot price and the cost of increasing the peak realized so far in the current month. The problem is solved using a brute force approach, evaluating the optimization problem for a total of 155,527 control scenarios, reported in Table 3, to find the exact minimizer S. To optimize the control of flexible devices in a distribution system operator DSO, network, the authors propose a four-step approach. Firstly, the total power of the DSO is forecasted using a light GBM model, denoted as Y underscore tot equals F underscore tot, X underscore T, theta underscore tot. Secondly, the baseline consumption of flexible devices is forecasted using the energy oracle with the control signal set to zero denoted as y underscore f, s0, equals f, x underscore t, s0, theta. Thirdly, the response of flexible devices under a given control scenario is forecasted using the energy oracle, denoted as y underscore f s equals f, x underscore t, s, theta. Finally, the objective function is evaluated on y underscore t s equals y underscore tot y underscore f, s0, plus y underscore fs for all plausible control scenarios, and the optimal control scenario s minimizing the total costs is returned. To mitigate the rebound effect, the authors propose segmenting flexibilities into various groups, enabling the optimal utilization of the entire appliance fleet's potential. This approach reformulates the problem as a combinatorial problem, which is then reduced in complexity using a sequential heuristic. The first group of devices optimizes on the uncontrolled power profile, and subsequent groups are optimized on the residual power profile. Figure 14 illustrates an example of optimized control action using the energy oracle, showcasing the control signals, forecast group responses, and simulated responses. The optimal control signals, simulated response, and response predicted by the energy oracle are displayed in the upper panel. The middle panel shows the power from uncontrolled nodes in the DSO's grid, the total DSO's power when no control action is taken, and the simulated and forecasted system response. To ensure end-user comfort while leveraging flexibility, the authors propose ensuring that appliances can meet energy demands for a certain period of time, despite shorter time shifts within this duration. They also suggest using an equivalent linear RC circuit to model the building's thermal dynamics effectively illustrating the inverse correlation between energy consumption and external temperature. The integration of photovoltaic power plants into the energy signature model is considered, with the average daily global horizontal irradiance, ID, as a contributing factor. A linear relationship between global irradiance and PV production is assumed. 
The energy signature is presented as a piecewise linear function of temperature and ID. The objective is to determine the necessary operational duration for a heat pump, HP, to meet a building's daily energy requirements. This involves estimating energy signatures and reference activation times for HPs, controlling their activation based on day ahead forecasts, and ensuring all HPs are allowed to operate for a sufficient time. The performance of the energy oracle in simulated closed loop operations is also assessed, evaluating its accuracy in predicting optimized force off and economic results. The daily error of the energy oracle is analyzed defined as the sum of squared errors between predicted and true responses from the simulation. This error tends to underpredict or oversmooth the true response, a behavior expected from a forecaster trained to minimize the sum of squares loss. The distribution of daily means of relative errors falls within the 2% to 2% interval, indicating that high error deviations in day ahead predictions are sporadic. The Oracle's performance in open loop simulations is evaluated, with daily relative errors plotted as a time series and the distribution of daily means of relative errors shown in figure 16. The results demonstrate that the Oracle's predictions are generally accurate, with some sporadic deviations. The closed-loop economic performances of the Oracle are compared using three approaches, simulated, forecast, and emulated. In the simulated approach, the Oracle is used to obtain the optimal control signal, which is then applied to the simulated system. In the forecast approach, optimal predictions are used to estimate costs, and the process is repeated daily. In the emulated approach, simulations are bypassed, and the oracle is used for both optimization and generating next-day responses. The results show that the emulated approach produces comparable results to the simulated approach in terms of costs, with deviations of less than 1% and less than 1 per thousand for total costs. The estimated tons of produced CO2 are also reported, estimated using the carbon intensity in the national energy mix. The performance of the Oracle is evaluated in terms of economic key performance indicators, KPIs, including costs generated by controlled devices and total costs. The results demonstrate that the Oracle's performance is accurate, with deviations of less than 1% for costs generated by controlled devices. The paper presents a methodology to model the flexibility potential of controllable devices in a DSO's distribution grid and optimally steer it by broadcasting force-off signals to different clusters of flexible devices. A non-parametric global forecasting model is trained, conditional to the control signals and the number of controlled devices, to predict their aggregated power. The numerical use case demonstrates that the forecaster's accuracy is high enough to use it as a guide to optimally steer deferrable devices. The forecaster can be used to bypass the simulation and speed up a blight -like testing and the retrieval of different demand-side management policies over different penetration of devices. The results show that the relative error of objectives normalized with the total simulated costs and additional costs faced by the DSO due to the flexible group are within a reasonable range with a relative error below 3% for energy costs and CO2 emissions, and a deviation of 6% for peak costs. The peak costs are underestimated, as expected, given the Oracle's training with a sum of squares loss that systematically underestimates extreme events. Possible extensions of the work include continuous control, which would require evaluating a large number of scenarios due to a higher time step for the control. This could be feasible by replacing the current approach with a more efficient method. The presented research aims to optimize energy flexibility in buildings by employing boosted trees with optimizable regressors. This approach formulates the problem within a stochastic framework, accounting for uncertainty in power profiles and energy oracle forecasts. A continuous signal is used to indicate the fraction of flexible devices that should be forced off at any given moment. Gradient descent is applied to the optimizable regressor to determine the optimal fraction. The deterministic nature of the framework is acknowledged, emphasizing the need for a stochastic approach to consider peak tariffs. The importance of probabilistic forecasts is highlighted, along with the potential benefits of this optimization framework in enhancing energy flexibility. Energy flexibility in residential buildings has been extensively researched, with a focus on characterization, quantification, and application methods. Model-based flexibility assessment has been explored, 
including probabilistic characterization of electricity consumer responsiveness to economic incentives. For instance, Smith proposed a standardized building assessment for demand response, while Lee et al. conducted a systematic review of characterization and quantification methods for energy flexibility. Large-scale demonstrations of precise demand response have been achieved through residential heat pumps, as shown by Muller et al. Generic characterization methods for energy flexibility have been applied to structural thermal storage in residential buildings, and probabilistic characterization of electricity consumer responsiveness has been studied. Furthermore, researchers have explored controlling electricity consumption by forecasting its response to varying prices, as demonstrated by Karate et al. Stochastic nonlinear modeling and application of price based energy flexibility have also been investigated, as seen in the work of Junker et al. Space heating demand in the Swiss residential building stock has been analyzed, along with evaluation of space heating needs in residential buildings at a territorial scale. Additionally, energy flexibility has been analyzed using input convex neural networks and guided image generation with conditional invertible neural networks. Other notable studies have examined heat transfer coefficients between heated or cooled radiant floors and rooms, distributed demand-side management using electric boilers, and discrete continuous model conversion. This comprehensive literature review highlights the state of the art in energy flexibility research, showcasing key methodologies, applications, and findings in the field. The control logic of heating systems is governed by thermal models, which are crucial for efficient operation. In the heat pump control logic, two temperature sensors in the water tank and one inside the house determine the working mode based on a moving average of external temperature. When heating is required, the system employs a hysteresis on the internal temperature, activating the circulation pump when the temperature falls below a predetermined threshold. This ensures a stable and responsive heating process. In cooling mode, the control logic modulates water temperature through a three-way valve allowing for precise temperature control. The heat distribution system is also modeled from first principles, focusing on floor heating. By applying energy balance principles, an analytical expression is derived for the temperature profile along the pipe, providing a fundamental understanding of heat transfer dynamics. This comprehensive approach enables the optimization of heating systems, leading to improved performance and energy efficiency. Let me know if you need further refinements. This study presents a detailed analysis of the thermal behavior of a building's heating system, focusing on the serpentine and water tank models. The serpentine model accounts for heat transfer between the water flowing through the tube and the surrounding air, with the heat transfer coefficient calculated using empirical relations for fully developed flow with fixed temperature boundary conditions. The temperature profile of the water inside the pipe is derived as a function of distance along the pipe considering the inlet water temperature and thermal resistances towards the floor and ground. The heating power flowing into the building is calculated by integrating heat transfer along the serpentine length, and the nominal mass flow and serpentine length are determined by solving an optimization problem that minimizes the difference between actual and simulated heating power, with a penalty term for deviations from nominal mass flow. The water tank model describes the dynamic evolution of tank layer temperatures, considering thermal powers due to buoyancy, conduction, and enthalpy flow from mass exchange. Thermal powers are calculated using empirical relations, and layer temperatures are determined by solving differential equations. The equivalent thermal resistance for each building can be found by solving an optimization problem that minimizes the difference between actual and simulated energy consumption incorporating heating system control logic parameters. However, due to computational requirements, solving this problem for all buildings is impractical, and a first approximation is proposed to address this limitation. In this section, the authors present a simplified model for simulating the heating system of a building, aiming to reduce computational costs while maintaining accuracy. The simplified model, denoted as E, replaces the original simulation logic in stratified tanks with equations, A.25, through, A.29. The first equation, A.25, calculates the nominal heating demand, QNOM, as the inverse of the thermal resistance, R, multiplied by the reference temperature difference, increment tray F. This value serves as a proxy for the actual heating demand in the original simulation. Equation, a.26, 
defines the binary variable U, which indicates whether the heating system is active. It is determined by comparing the one-week moving average of the external temperature, TMA, with a minimum threshold, TMA, min. If the moving average falls below this threshold, the heating system is activated. The actual heating demand, kint, T, is then calculated in equation, A.27, as the product of the nominal heating demand and the activation status of the heating system. The internal temperature, TT, is updated in equation, A.28, using the exactly discretized dynamic matrices, ADD and BD, obtained from the continuous dynamic matrices through exact discretization, 44. These matrices are functions of the thermal capacitance, C, and resistance, R, and are used to simulate the thermal dynamics of the building over time. Finally, the total energy consumption of the heating system over a year is estimated in equation, A.29, as the sum of the actual heating demands for each time step. By utilizing these simplified equations, the computational cost for a yearly simulation with a 10-minute sampling time can be significantly reduced to 0.5 milliseconds on average when compiled with NUMBA. This makes it feasible to solve the optimization problem. A.24, for all simulated buildings using gradient-based methods. An analysis of day head power oracle predictions for varying numbers of heat pumps, HPs, and electric heaters, EHs, with the force off activated at least once reveals the model's capability to capture the overall pattern of power consumption. Figure B.18 illustrates the relationship between the number of HPs and EHs and their impact on power consumption, showing that as the number of HPs increases, both observed and predicted power consumption increase, although with some fluctuations. A second scenario, also displayed in figure B18, presents a different set of HPs and EHs, where observed power consumption follows a more consistent pattern, while predicted values exhibit greater variability. This suggests that the model's accuracy may depend on the specific configuration of HPs and EHs. A third scenario, also in figure B18, features a lower number of HPs, resulting in generally lower observed power consumption. Predicted values follow a similar pattern, albeit with some deviations, highlighting the model's ability to adapt to different HP and EH configurations. While these graphs demonstrate the model's capability to predict day head power consumption based on the number of HPs and EHs, even when the force off is activated at least once, the variability in predicted values across different scenarios indicates that further refinement of the model may be necessary to improve its accuracy and consistency. A comparative analysis of day head power oracle predictions for different numbers of heat pumps, HPs, and electric heaters, EHs, is presented, with the force off not being active. The data is visualized in figure B.19, showcasing the predicted and observed values across various scenarios. In the first scenario, there are 954 HPs and 500 EHs, resulting in a prediction of 1,917 kilowatts. The second scenario involves 2,670 HPs and 875 EHs, with a predicted power of 2,545 kilowatts. The third scenario has 954 HPs and 1,500 EHs, yielding a prediction of 2,454 kilowatts. The fourth scenario consists of 191 HPs and 1625 EHs, resulting in a predicted power of 1,816 kilowatts. The fifth scenario includes 2,288 HPs and 1,375 EHs, with a prediction of 2,663 kilowatts. Finally, the sixth scenario features 1,526 HPs and 500 EHs, resulting in a predicted power of 2,026 kilowatts. Each scenario is depicted in the figure as a function of time steps, measured in 15-minute intervals. The observed values are also provided for comparison, allowing researchers to assess the accuracy of the predictions. This analysis aims to evaluate the effectiveness of the power oracle model under varying conditions, shedding light on its reliability and potential for real-world applications.